It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. I think I found something. Pretty good, yeah. Behind the wheel of a classic car. Oh, stop it. And a go. Scar Britain for antiques. Ooh, I think it's brilliant. The aim? To make the biggest <laughs> profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. You're some man. There'll be worthy winners and valiant losers. <laughs> oh. Will it be the high road to glory? Yeah, baby. Or the slow oh. road to disaster? Oh, oh. This <laughs> is the Antiques Road Trip. <laughs> Quite enough of that. Rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. Oh, hang on. It doesn't seem to be dampening the spirits in our cheery 60s sunbeam. That's one of the things I find so positive about what we do and I find so exciting is that you never know what you're going to see, you never know what you're going to find and you could be very, very lucky. Do you do life coaching? <laughs> <laughs> Antiques experts Raj Bizram and Natasha Raskin Sharp are strapped in for the final part of their trip, which began in Royal Tunbridge Wells before touring the southeast and going round in some very big circles, heading for a final auction in Willingham near Cambridge. Nottinghamshire is the place this morning for merry men and women. Naturally, thoughts turn to Robin Hood. I don't think he would have liked you. You're too, oh. you're too rich. You're too rich. No, he would I'm, have the, loved I'm me. the poor. I'm the poor. <laughs> <laughs> You would have been the equivalent of Robin Hood's enemy, the one rolling in money. <laughs> well, the way things are going, I'm going to end up prior tuck and more like, OK? <laughs> well, I'm no Maid Marion, but I do feel like I need rescuing, to be honest with you. <laughs> anyway, Maid Marion bagged a small profit last time to turn her initial £200 into £298.84. But she was robbed of a win by Little John, who made out like the proverbial bandit, filling his coffers with £710.88p. So, where are the rich pickings today? You know we're headed to Cambridgeshire? Yep. I presume you're Oxbridge educated. Of course not. Of course, not. as am I. Of, of course, course not. not. <laughs> <laughs> we're heading to Cambridgeshire, the auction house Raj, I'm here to tell you, they will not accept furniture. It's just a no-go, OK? But then what if you see, oh, a beautiful French Louis XIV-style vitrine? And you know, you know it's worth £15,000. And it's there in the antique shop, marked up for 30. What do you do? Do you step away? Do you break the rules? No, I usually wake up at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Pinch me. It's a dream. It's a dream. <laughs> With a wake-up call looming in Willingham, the first stop of the day is Newark on the River Trent, which is looking a little under the weather today. But there's hope for a few good finds at Natasha's first shop, a former Salvation Army Citadel. It's a shame you're not coming with me. I know. Well, this looks exciting, doesn't it? OK, are we done? Yeah. Right. Have a good shopping trip. Thank you, Raj. I appreciate that. Do you mean it? Do you really yeah, mean it? Yeah, you, you're looking for a painting, don't forget. <laughs> a painting? You're looking for a painting. One worth thousands. <laughs> yeah. Right, you have a great day. Yeah, you too. See you soon, Raj. Yeah, keep dry. Bye, drive safely. Bye. Oh. The Albert Street Antique Centre, presided over today by Simon, houses the seemingly endless bounty of more than 50 dealers. Super cool. That's really trendy. It's what 1960s. It probably would require very little effort to wire this into your home and to almost transform your room. I'm thinking hallway. I'm thinking when you walk in, this really strikes a chord with your visitors. They know you mean business, they know you love design. A little bit of brass, a little bit of copper, nice glass shades. I think that's super cool. It's about 70 years old, but do you know what? Everything comes around and it is bang on trend. Yeah, well, if you say so. And where's our other trendsetter at this morning? He's rallying on his tot to his first buying opportunity in Staythorpe. Is this right? Hello. Has he rocked up at the home of some professional footballer? This doesn't look right at all. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. This is a bit odd. Well, he's in. It's a funny antique shop. 
This is the rural hideaway of fantastic Mr. Fox and his den of interesting things sold at antiques fairs and online. The owners are said to be a tame couple and are at home today by appointment. Hello there, I'm Raj. Nice to meet you, I'm Nick. Nick, lovely to meet you. This is Joe. Joe, hi, yes. lovely to meet you. I go to lots of shops, Nick. This is a little bit different. Yeah, good. Lots of bargains? Yeah, lots of stuff to get rid of. Oh, I don't like the way you said that. Yeah. Lots of stuff to get rid of. There's plenty here. Go and have a look around. I've got yeah. some bits you might like if you want to come up. Sure. An offer he can't refuse. So, Joe, you wanted to bring me up here and show me something. That's look what you said. Look at these. These lovely family Bibles. It's not really my kind of thing, I have to be honest. You've had them a long time, haven't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought <laughs> so. Covered in you, dust. you want to get rid of them. <laughs> I mean, how many yeah. have you got? You've got there's all sorts of things. Up. There's two Victorian ones, and then there's a Browns one, uh -huh. which is illustrated with all the nature plates as well. The animals and the foliage. You do a bit better than this to sell them to me. OK, coloured yeah, coloured plates. Yeah, good, very nice. Loads, all intact. Yeah. yeah. These beautiful Victorian illustrated editions of the self-interpreting Bible first published in 1778 by John Brown, a Scottish shepherd-turned-minister. With the dust covers over. OK. All right, well, for, for all... Because all, you've got all loads three. of them. You've got all sorts of Bibles. So we've got three of these, we've got four little ones, we've got a statue, we've got a little cross. So a religious bundle, what can we do them for? Do you want to speak to the boss? Ah, that would be Nick. In fact, I struggle selling these, to be honest, but We've your wife has... Yeah. Coerce me into this. <laughs> We've obviously struggled selling them as well, because they're still here. <laughs> uh, £40 for the lot. 50 I tell you what, I'll split the difference with you. This is a risky lot for me. I'm going to need some divine intervention. £45. Yeah, let's do it. OK. 45. Brilliant. So you're going to give me £45 <laughs> to take this lot away, yeah? Perfect. OK. <laughs> <laughs> OK, first deal done. Praise be! I'm back in Newark. Has Natasha seen more than the light? This dish is really cool. It says on the label Oriental, and it definitely comes from the Far East, and there's a mark to prove it. Age-wise, I think this is maybe 1960s, I would say. So, again, it falls into that kind of mid-20th century category, but you cannot say this falls under the umbrella of mid-century modern. It's in a league of its own. Obviously, it's covered in insects, a big spider in the middle weaving its web, but I think it's striking enough to stand out in any auction, and sometimes that's all it takes, something a little bit different to get the hands going up and to drive that hammer price as high as it possibly can go. Oh, I'm falling over, I'm so excited. She's also taking a liking for Lazy Susan. Lazy Susan? Really? I just think that's really cool. But it is teak, it is mid-century, it is Danish, it has all the watchwords, all the hallmarks of everything cool right now. It's marked up at £89. It's not going to be a huge amount of wiggle on that. So I don't know. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Ask Simon. So, these are all the things I like. Um, the ceiling lamp has no price on it. This is marked up at 69 and this 89 So I'm wondering... What can we do? Ceiling light will be 30. 30, OK, cool. That can be 50. OK, so we're at 80. And that can be 60. Uh, 140. Yeah. Very best? Very best. Very, very best? Very, very best. Yeah. <laughs> very best. 140 for three items. Not too shabby. I'll say cool. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much Simon. Thank, Thank you. you. Almost half her available cash. Yeah. Just like that. Simon, thank you so thank much. You. Oh, before I grab the antiques, I'll grab the coat. Thank you. Thank you. Meanwhile, over at Nick and Joe's gaff, Holy Willie's Bibles are big, but Nick wants to show him something heavy. This is the heaviest thing we've got. Is it? Yeah, it's the Penny Scales from 1974. It's dated on the top there. Yeah, they're quite cool, aren't they? Yeah, they're a good look. They look great in a bathroom. They would, wouldn't they? Yeah, really nice. I mean, do they work? Sadly, they don't. Fat lot of good, then. <laughs> what? use is a set of scales if they don't work. They're perfect for someone who's just got that extra pound that they want to admit to. Do we know why it doesn't work? Is it because you just uh, haven't got a coin? I don't have an old 10p coin. So and I'm that's the only it. reason? Yeah, I've not tried it, so... 
Oh, but I'm just selling it as not working. I think they're quite funky. I mean, how much how much are these? If you give me 50, I'll give you a lift it out with them. I tell you what, if I give you 45, I'll get someone to help you. <laughs> Let's do it. Deal. Brilliant. Thanks very much That's indeed. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Nick. 45 each, then, for the Bibles and the scales. Can I? I'll get one for you. And it seems our Bible thumper was fibbing about the helping hands. <laughs> oh, well. They look happy enough. Meanwhile, Natasha's been making her way southwest to the city of Nottingham, where heroes like Brian Clough, William Booth, and Robin Hood have earned lasting fame outside of Sherwood Forest. But there's another very famous local, not so well remembered these days Victorian heavyweight, bare knuckle boxing champion of England, William Thompson, better known as Bendigo. He's been uh, compared to a, a 19th century Muhammad Ali. Local historian Alan Dance has written a book about this neglected hero. Well, he was born uh, about half a mile away from here in the centre of Nottingham in New Yard, which is now called Trinity Walk, in October 1811. Now, he had a very, very poor upbringing, a very poor family. His father, Benjamin Thompson, but Benjamin liked his ale, and about a week before William's 16th birthday in 1827, he, he dropped down dead in the King's Head pub, Gosh. which left William and his mother completely on their own, uh, with no means of support, to the extent they had to go into the workhouse, which was the last place you went. You had to be really on your uppers to go there. William was obliged to provide for his family, firstly by selling oysters on the street and then working as an iron turner, all the while becoming a fit and athletic young man. By about the age of 18, he, uh, he, he's reckoned to have his first fight, an amateur, sort of amateur fight, it was for money, uh, at Selston Common. It was his first attempt, we, as far as we know, as a boxer. Agile and quick on his feet, he soon gained a reputation, employing a particular technique to great success. He was left-handed and he, he, he boxed with what we refer to as the southpaw stance, and which is, of course, still used today. And he did have, have his own unique style. He used to fool around in the ring and taunt his opponents and do somersaults and all that sort of thing, plus his southpaw stance. So uh, that's how he's remembered. Bendigo enjoyed a colourful career until 1850 before falling into bad ways, often incarcerated after bouts of heavy drinking and disorderly behaviour. After a religious conversion, he declared that he would fight only for Christ and drew large crowds to his sermons until he died aged 69 in 1880. And so on Friday the 27th of August, the funeral cortege left Beeston. Thousands and thousands followed it all the way to Nottingham uh, to the burial here in the, uh, in the burial ground. And that, that was the end of Bendigo. And at Nottingham School of Boxing, the spirit of Bendigo lives on. Natasha's meeting coach, Marcellus Baz. Bendigo is a, is a positive role model in, in, in Nottingham. He, you know, he's, he's done things through a difficult environment to make something positive. I set up this organisation, Nottingham School of Boxing and Switch Up, to provide young people a, a safe, inclusive environment to be able to have positive role models and channel their um, anger and aggression in a positive way. And most importantly, the skills and the support to be able to get a job, you know, and, and talk to positive people rather than negative people. So that's exactly why I set these organisations up. Time for a bout, Southpaw style. Excellent. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a combination together, all right? All right, so OK. So we're going to start with the one. That's the one. One. And that's the two. Two. And then the three is going to be the hook around the corner. Three. three. And then the four is going to be the upper hook coming underneath. Okay. All right? So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Excellent. Brilliant. Brilliant. Let's yeah. try that again then, yeah? Yo! <laughs> and yeah. the champion! Feels amazing. Yeah. Total knockout! What fun. <laughs> and a second round of shopping is looming for Raj, who's back behind the wheel of the Sunbeam. It's headlights on and straight ahead for Mansfield, where his destination is an enormous former industrial building. It's big. Eight and a half thousand square feet big. This is the Victoria Antique Centre. I'm Raj. I'm Peter. Peter, lovely to meet you. And you. This looks enormous. It is enormous. It's going to take me ages to get round. Yeah, yeah. 
God, I remember those yeah. already when I was a kid. Fabulous. Aren't they fabulous? Yes. Does it work? It does work. Really? Would you like a go? Is there a cure at Greg's? Oh! Big kid. <laughs> <laughs> How much is one of these? Five, seven, five. Seems quite a lot. Worth every penny. Are you happy to show me around? I am. Fantastic. Let's go then. Huh. Raj isn't backing that pony, but he's off with Peter for a trek around this enormous place. There. Oodles and oodles of things. But Mr Magpie has spotted some silver. Hey, leave something in the cabinet. These Vesta cases are all hallmark silver and were used for storing and striking matches until about the 1920s. I'll make you an offer for the, for the five. I'd like to offer you £70 pounds for, for the five. What do you think? I think eight is a fair price. OK, £80. Pounds. We have a deal, I bought something. Hey. Yay! And Peter also wants to show him a vintage Ministry of Defence explosive warning sign. This is a sign that... A sign? This is a sign. That sounds like ominous. It is a sign. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-war. A little bit of age with it as well. Any person who is found committing an, any act which tends to cause explosion or fire in or about these premises shall be liable to a penalty not exceeding fifty pounds. Wow, that I mean, was a lot of money. That was a lot of money. That, I mean, fifty pounds that would have bought you a house. Yeah. In those yeah. days, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. I, I haven't seen one quite like this before, but I know there are a lot of military collectors out there. I mean, there's no price ticket on it. I think the bottom line would be eighty pounds. The most I'd probably go to is £60. I'm looking at bottom line would be 80 Would you come down a bit if I come up a bit? What about £65? Oh. Brilliant. Let me give you some pounds. 65 for the sign and 80 for the Vestas. 80, 100. Get strapped back into the sunbeam. It's time to collect Natasha, whose interest in antiques began at the Raskin family home in Glasgow. My great uncle Sydney, he was a jeweller, and he, not necessarily in the antique trade, but I'm sure he dealt in plenty of second-hand diamonds. He was a diamond jeweller, diamond oh, dealer. Wow! Wow! What about you? We, I had an uncle who was in the antique trade. He always used to say to, to me that um, when one door closes, another one opens. Uh -huh. But it wasn't until I was a bit older that I found out he was just a rotten cabinet maker. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting a bit nostalgic there, <laughs> thinking about my great-uncle Sidney. <laughs> You're setting me up for a job. He was. <laughs> Nighty night. See, this car, this car was made for this kind of road. I think we'll get to Cambridgeshire three weeks on Tuesday. <laughs> That's right. I think the last thing that came along here was the slow coach. Oh, yeah, this baby can handle anything. This baby can. And you driving? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No problem. Even more terrifying. Me, me navigating. Right, hold on. Right, right a bit, left a bit. Oh, cropes. Oh. While minding the potholes, what does Raj think of Natasha's favourite buy from yesterday? I mean, creepy crawlies, how are they going to sell at the auction? I mean, what did you pay for it? Oh, what did I pay for? Oh, actually, it was pricey. Was it? £50. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> no, you didn't. You never know. I'm going to summarise it thus. OK. I'm freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hey. Careful! <laughs> Listen, I paid enough, don't crack it. <laughs> OK. Have you insured it? OK. <laughs> it is the world's most expensive plate. <laughs> Natasha also went wild for a lamp and a lazy Susan. So she's bumping along today with £158.84. While Raj was talked into some weighty tomes. You've had them a long time, haven't you? Oh, yeah. He also bought some Vesta cases, an MOD sign, and a set of vintage scales. 20, 40, 60, His pockets are still jingling with £475.88. Lovely, well done. Excellent. Wow. There you go. Right, OK, we did it. Sheesh, that'll be why there's a sign. <laughs> Time to rejoin a decent carriageway, thank you. Eject Raj from the passenger seat and crack on to Natasha's first shop of the day in the vicinity of Shackerstone. 
It might not always be in the vicinity of Shackerstone, but today it is. That's because it's an antique shop on a narrow boat, and this morning it's moored on the Ashby Canal. Antiques afloat is the shop in question, and Ali is the skipper. I've never seen anything like it. Oh, brilliant. Well, we're, we are probably Britain's only floating canal-based antique shop. We're pretty weather dependent, so um, we turn up in a place, pretty place where people might come to down to the canal for the day, and we put everything on the roof, and hopefully we can entice them into buying something. So how does she get a closer look at the wares? You want to be, be a bit careful, because the boat does move a little bit. Oh, that's probably that. shouldn't have worn high heels. That was a bit down. Crikey. Let's not have a stiletto disaster. Right, what's on this barge? Good morning. Hi there. Morning. Gosh, this is fun. That's cold, though. It's quite cool. It is, isn't it? It's so interesting because it's so pierced. Yes. It doesn't have the weight. No. And so you expect to lift a piece of cast iron up and to sort of say, oh, gosh, that's weighty. But because yeah. it's pierced, it's, it's light. It's yeah. strange. It's a bit of a trick of the eye, almost. There's quite a lot going on there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah, you have thistles down here and you have, I don't know, it's like a mare-man and a mare-woman yeah. there with the shell cast symbol there. It was done as a, an exhibition piece for the Great Exhibition. Um, and I mean, cast iron. Hmm. So that would have so. been a wall plaque in yeah. gilt? Yeah, yeah, they, they, you can just see some of the gilding is, yeah. um, is left. You can see the gold gilding left on. Um, it's not something I've purchased before, but it's really nicely cast. Yeah, I could do that for 25. You could do that for 25. See, I don't know what that would sell for at auction. I have to say, I have no point of reference. Maybe she'll find her bearings for something else. This fine late Victorian bargeware or Meshamware teapot inscribed Needingworth might be just a ticket, yes? Uh, the teapot is a canal classic. You are a canal boat antique shop. I've never been to the likes. I feel as though it would be churlish to turn this down, A, because of that provenance, and B, because this town or village is in Cambridgeshire, where we're heading. It is indeed. So what's the very best price on the teapot? The absolute best price for you would have to be £40. £40, OK. I think I'd prefer to go with the plaque. That's fine, yeah. I've not offended a woman who loves canals. Not at all, not at all. There is a boat waiting for that teapot somewhere out there. Can you sail those all day long? I can. You can, <laughs> right, OK. Well, I think in that case, £25, let's go for the plaque. Brilliant. OK, cool, right. Here we go. £25 to Ali, who can always move on to find new customers. <laughs> Watch you don't sink in those heels now. Time to see what floats Raj's boat today. He's gone in a northeasterly direction to Loughborough, where the bells are ringing today and every day because the town is home to the largest traditional bell foundry in the world. John Taylor and Co's bells are rung around the globe from St Paul's to Sydney and York Minster to Yale. Raj is meeting director David Potter. I'm Raj. Hi, Raj. I'm David. Bell founding was an itinerant craft. So in other words, the bells were much too heavy to move around on muddy roads. And so the, the bell founder would set up a furnace in a field next to the church, cast his bell or bells for that particular church, and then move on to the next bell. But manufacture became easier after the Industrial Revolution. The tailors came to Loughborough in 1839 because they got the contract to cast a peal of eight bells for the parish church and a condition of the contract was the bells were cast within the parish. When they came, they thought this is a good place to set up permanently and they've been here ever since. The labour-intensive processes used today are centuries old, beginning with making the mould from a mixture of sand, clay and horse dung. Matt is creating the second layer of this bell. This part that I'm doing right here is the finishing process. It's a slightly thinner mixture and this is on, after it's baked, this stays nice and hard and uh, stops any cracking as the, as the mould goes off. 20 minutes just to stand before it then gets put into the oven and it's baked. And how long is it baked for? It's baked for one night. After this, 
The bell's put into the ground via a, a big pit and it's, uh, it's back filled. So only just this top section here is, is poking up from the top of the ground. That's where the metal's poured into the mold. It's given time to set off and that's when the casting is officially finished and you break open the mold and that's when your finished product is. Yes, you did hear right. The moulds are buried in the foundry floor so that only the top protrudes and the molten bronze is poured in between the two layers of the mould and the cast bell is left to set slowly in the earth. The bells will then go to the last process, tuning, where the contours and thicknesses are adjusted for perfect pitch. And hark! In the town's Queen's Park, you can hear bells made at Taylor's Foundry a hundred years ago. They're still ringing beautifully in their carillon, where they're played with a baton keyboard. The borough carillonneur is Caroline Sharp. Come and join me. Caroline, yeah? <laughs> yes, I'm Caroline. Raj. Hi, Raj. Raj. How long has it been here? It, it's been here since 1923. It was built as a memorial to the young men of the town who lost their lives in the Great War. But I think because of the town's association with Taylor Bell Foundry and the fact that Belgium is the home of bell music, that kind of linked it um, to the town. And so the idea of a bell tower was born. This symbol of Loughborough's sorrow for the loss of its sons has 47 bells inscribed with dedications to the fallen. How are those bells played? Carillon or carillion is different to the sort of bells that you'd hear being rung in a church tower and they're tuned chromatically which means you can play any number of tunes and I can play more than one bell at once so any harmonies I can play any piece of music on these bells. Wow I'm excited now <laughs> show me how it works. Well the batons instead of playing with your fingers as you would a keyboard you play with a clenched fist oh. so I think the best way to learn how to play it is to have a go. Really? Yes. OK. Are you a grade 8 pianist? Uh, of course. Yes. So that one there. Yep. Brilliant. That, yeah. That's it. <laughs> um, with your left foot, just do the same with the bottom bell. And do the left foot first and then the right hand. OK, left foot first. Left foot first and then the right hand. And if you keep doing that rhythmically, Bravo! Raj Bisram, Carillonneur extraordinaire. I feel sorry for anybody out in the park. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> From bells to the full-time whistle. Yes, it's nearly that time, and it's the last chance to bag a bargain and score a winner over in Leicester. Natasha's first to arrive at Freeman's Common Antique Centre. How big is this place? Big. Oh, wow. Hello, hi. Hello. Hi, I'm Tasha. I'm Dan. Lovely Hello. to meet you. And you? And who's this? This is Lucy. Oh, Lucy. Oh, she's gorgeous. Is she going to help me find, sniff out some amazing profits? <laughs> I'd like to think so. She's a, she's a good girl. Oh, yes, you are, yeah. As far as the eye can see, this place is stuffed up with the goods of 100 vendors. Our expert will need a discerning eye or possibly a pair of binoculars. Yes, Raj has arrived. Tash, Tash, I'm looking for bargains. Help me. So, crack on the pair of you. <laughs> this is really cool. Now, decanter labels are not exactly breaking new ground on the antiques road trip. If you've seen any episodes of this program, I'm sure you've come across these before. They hang from the neck of the decanter. But what's slightly different about this one is that it doesn't say port or sherry or brandy or whiskey. It says, quite boldly, burgundy, which everyone knows is an expensive red wine, a nice bit of Van Rouge that deserves decanting from its bottle. They are really in your face, London hallmarks. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I know the dates off the top of my head, but it looks 
very 60s to me. Should I try to buy items to go with it and create a bit of a mixed lot? Maybe. But is this a cunning plan? OK, so judging by the fact that they come from the same cabinet and the label is exactly the same, I'm going to say that they're the same dealer. This could complement the label really nicely, actually, because if you've just decanted your burgundy into your decanter using your Hallmark silver wine funnel, of course, that would have been nice to find, then you might not have decanted the whole bottle and you might find yourself looking to cork that bottle and you might want to use this wine stopper. This is a nice lot for the wine drinker in your family. Someone who appreciates a fine vin rouge might be quite chuffed to receive a wine stopper and a label for their decanter. 25 plus 20 equals 45. Uh, I think 30 would be my top price. Time to talk to the top dog, or rather, the top dog's human. Dan, I have been rummaging around and I've found something for the wine drinkers among us. Uh, together, they make a combined total of £45. What's your very best price? I could do that for £30 for you. £30? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm sure. Do you know what? I'm totally tough with that. I'll drink to that. Thank you Smash so it. much, Dan. Thank you. Right, I'll grab you some money. £30. Excellent work. Time you sniff something out. Thoughts, Raj? This is, this is nice. This is a little bit different. It's a, a shop piece. And you would have seen these in lots of haberdashery shops. It's probably, you know, turn of the century. I'd say it's probably Edwardian. They're very, very collectible. And what's really nice is that it's still got its original markings here. It's a lovely little shop piece. I really like it. I can see it being quite collectible. It's got £125 on the ticket. I'm going to take it to the counter and see what they can do. And Dan's got Sam, the owner, on the blower. I found something, uh, which is the needle box, you know, the um, haberdashery shop piece. Yes. I would be looking for more in the region of 90. I mean, I could go up to 65. I could meet him more in the middle and go to 70. Would that work for you? We have a deal. At £70, thank you very much indeed, Sam. That's fantastic. I can't shake your hands, but I will shake Dan's. Who's in the shop? Fantastic. Thank you very okay. much. Thank Once you very much. Thank you, Sam. Fantastic. And with that, their work is done. Seven, seven, eight, Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much indeed. Right, come on, leg it. Let's go. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, after you were done. Right, leg it. Oh. <laughs> Cats and dogs, eh? Go. <laughs> oh my dear. Oh. Where did that come from? Let me drive you to your destination. How lovely is that? Cambridgeshire. Here we go, Cambridgeshire. Right. After some shut eye. Night night, you two. If the sun shines on the righteous, well, we're living right in the Cambridgeshire village of Willingham this morning, and that's where we find the lovely house and barns of Willingham Auctions. You up for this? Yeah. Final auction, eh? I know. It's a bit sad, really, isn't it? I know, but you really look the part. So do you, I, I have to I say. don't know, I feel like I'm wearing a weird outfit. Do I look weird? Not at all. No weirder than all. <laughs> no weirder than you. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, call the style police. <laughs> well, this definitely looks good. Natasha parted with a total of £195 on five lots. Thoughts, Raj? I'm not sure there's a great age in this, but a great name. In fact, one of the best names, Colebrookdale. They made all the lovely, ornate benches that you see in gardens. Beautiful. I mean, this is quite ornate, but I don't think it's got a great deal of age. £25, even though it's a modern piece, there should be a profit in that. So, well done. Old money bags shelled out £305 on five lots, including these vestas. I think there's a profit in there. It's not a profit that's going to get us hot under the collar, but a profit nonetheless. Stephen Drake is our auctioneer today. What would he single out? The Chinese ceramic uh, dish is really interesting, and there's been a lot of interest in that, um, as there should be. Uh, very collectible, should do really well. Um, MOD sign, explosives. Never really seen one before like it. Should go with a bang. <laughs> Well, the room is already jumping, and there's internet and telephone bidding too. So make your way to a couple of comfortable antique chairs. We're front row. <laughs> and they're off. 
First up is Raj's collection of Bibles and religious paraphernalia. Start at twenty pounds on this lot. Twenty pound bit. Okay, he's looking for twenty. Twenty pound bit. Oh, Wait, twenty is bit. Struggling at twenty. Light reading for you on an evening at twenty. Twenty pound bit at twenty. Is there a five? Twenty five. Thank you very much. I'm glad you're here at twenty five. Twenty five pound bit. Oh, right. oh, come on. Oh no. So we lost. No good Samaritan to help him out there. I'll think of you in my prayers. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's see whether Natasha can do any better with her cast iron Colebrookdale dish. Start at twenty pounds on this lot. Twenty pound bit. Twenty pound bit on the Colebrookdale. Straight 20. away, you win. Someone's bidding. Someone's bidding. Are they behind them? Oh, are they behind them? Oh, come on. Are they behind them? They're behind you. Don't look round. <laughs> Fifty pound bit. Fifty. I shall sell at Fifty pounds. Double your money. Well done. Oh, this gentleman. That's it. Nice work, sir. <laughs> and a tidy wee sum for Natasha. It's a good dump. That's, That's all right. Great. Right. Well, he thinks it's right. Yeah. Now, can Raj turn the other cheek and make a profit on his collection of Vesta cases? We'll start at uh, 25 on this lot. 25, 45, 45 pound bit. It just climbs. It bit, just climbs. 50, 5, 55 <laughs> pound bit. 55 pound bit on the lot. Up and up pound to 80. Bit. 80, 80 pound bit, sir. 80 pound bit. 85, 85-pound bit. 85 pound bit. One more, one more. Bid at 85 now, 85-pound bit. One more, one more. Bid, 85, 85-pound, 90. Room bid at 95. 95-pound bit. 95-pound bit on the lot at 95. Selling then at 95. Come on. Little profit. Little That's what profit. we said, little profit. Yeah. But it is a profit. Still cheap, though. Still, Still cheap. cheap. Still cheap. <laughs> cheap. <laughs> Crack open the rosé and get out the cheese on sticks. It's party time for Natasha's Lazy Susan. Start at £20 on this lot, £20 bit. £20 bit on the lot at £20. Quite, £20 bit. Sad. £25, thank you. £25. Me a bit sad. Still with me at £30. £30 bit. £30 bit on £35, <laughs> thank you. £40 well against you now. £40 against you. £45 then, £45 I'm out now. £45 bit. £45 bit in the room and selling then at £45. This small loss, but it's a, that was a cheap piece, I think. That, I like that. Me too. Oh, well, past the cocktail sausages. I don't think... Have you got the idea of this? No. We're supposed to buy things for auction. <laughs> I know. I wish you'd told me that earlier. <laughs> Least said, soonest mended. It's Raj's haberdashery box under the hammer next. So I come straight 110 on this lot, 110 pound bit. 110 pound bit. Bits on the internet at 110. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. 110 pound um, bit. That's 110 fantastic. 110 pound bit on the lot at 110. Are there any further bits? 110 pound bit, internet bit at 110. I shall sell 110 pounds. 110. Nice. Yeah, fist bump. Yes, things are looking up for Raj. It's all about how it looked Look. today, and it looked so good today. Time to see how good Natasha's decanter label and wine stopper look. They're up now. Start at 35 on this lot. 35 pound oh, bit. You're up there. 35 you're up there. bit on the lot at 35. What's bid? 35. 40. 40. Yeah. The profit already. Come on. Profit already. 50, now. 50 pound bit. 50 pound bit on the lot at 50. It's with me at 50. 50 oh, pound bit. Are we all done? Oh, go at on. 50. 50 pound bid. Any further bid selling then? 50 pounds. Excellent. Can I confess I was hoping for a wee bit more? Am I being churlish now? I'm just being churlish. Nope. You'll need to be content with that. Amy, who? I'm chuffed. Good. Good. Warning, it's Raj's MOD sign next. It's interesting this. I've got to come in at 25 on this lot. 25 pound bit. 25 bit on the explosive oh, sign oh, at 25. 30, 5, 35, 40 now. 40 pound bit. £40 bid, ladies bid at 40 Selling in the room then at £40. It's another loss. It was a, but it's only a wee one. Oh, dear. That was a bit of a damp squib. Yeah, win some, you lose some. Yeah. You make a fortune, you don't make a fortune. Exactly. You know, that's life. This is no time for philosophy. Who's going to win? Natasha's 60s lamp is up now. Interesting. We'll start at uh, twenty pounds on this lot. Twenty pound bit. Twenty pound bit on the land. Twenty. Twenty-five. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Any more? At twenty-five. Twenty-five. Thirty now. Thirty pound bit. Still with me at thirty. Are there any further bids? Oh, 30. surely. Thirty pound bid and selling then at oh. thirty pounds. You've uh, cleaned your face on it, as they say. I wanted a double up. No, is it clean your face? Wiped your face. Wiped your face. That's what I meant to say. Wiped your face. <laughs>
After auction costs, that will actually be a loss. I wanted a double up. Oh, no, Didn't get it. This time. Didn't get it. Can Raj weigh in now with his last lot, the 70s scales? We've had plenty of people trying it, but they didn't have any 10 P's, but there we are. We'll start at 25 on this lot, 25 on the stand, 30, 5, 40, 5, on, yeah. 50, 5, 60. 60 pound bid. Yes. 60 pound mm, bid in the room. 60 come pound on. bid. Ladies bid at 60. 60 pound bid on the lot at 60. 5, 70. Oh, it's a war. Still cheap. Well done. 75. 80. 80 pound bid. 80 pound bid. Ladies bid at 80. Uh, 80. 80, no. 80 pound <laughs> bid. 80 pound bid. 80 pound. Selling then at 80 pounds. Nearly a double up. A weighty profit. A weighty profit. OK. I thought Raj looked like he was putting on a few pounds. But surely we've lost weight perspiring through the excitement. <laughs> Last chance now for Natasha. Her Chinese plate, decorated with insects, is last under the hammer. Start the bidding at uh, £25 on this lot. £25. Oh, slowly but surely, don't. So, yes. Here we go, it's going to go. 5, 60, 5, 70, 5, 80, 5, 90, 5. 95, on, 100, 100. 110, yes. 120, 130, 130 pounds at 130. You're out, still with me at 130. 130 pound bit, 130 pound, 140, 150, still with me at 150. That's cool. 150 pound bit, 150 pound bit, 160. I'm out now, 170, 170 pound bit. Internet bit at 170, 180, 180 pound bit. 180 pound bit on the lot at 180. 180 pound bid. 190. 190 pound bid. Oh, don't miss out, underbidder. Get in at 200. Again, 190. Any further bids? 190. Fair warning to you, I shall sell at 190. What a fantastic. tangled web we weave. Absolutely. Where did that absolutely come from? Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> oh, look, there's Raj caught in her web. I'm going to grab my jacket. Yep, yeah, we off. I think we should go. OK, fantastic. Oh, I don't want to leave. Oh, well. Off they go, and we can tot up those sums. Natasha sailed into the lead this time, and after auction fees, she finished this trip with a grand total of £403.14p. Well done. And while Raj lost this last auction, he wins the trip because after sale room fees, his piggy still contains a stonking £692.88. All final profits go to children in need. It's all over, Tash. C'est fini. I know. Encore. Sad. Would you like to do it again? I'd love to do it again. I could do it again. It's been an absolute ball. Well done, by the way. Ah. Come here. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> oh, love you, man. I'm going to be sad. I love you. I man. love you too. <laughs> Bisram and Raskin Shop were quite a team. Our names are on the car. Raj, Bisram. And showed off their moves. There was a touch of magic. Just like that. And sportsmanship. Obliterate it. Hope you enjoyed it as much as they did. Yeah.